Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Tuning, and Marine. In this video, I'm showing a 4.3 liter V6 with a crankshaft installed. And uh, so let me tell you about the story and how I got to this point. So um, when I first installed this crankshaft, I met, before I installed the crankshaft, I measured out and mic'd all my journals. And I write the journals down on the, on the, on the block. So I had 2.4486 on the first one, 2.4486 on the second one, 2.4486 on the third and 2.4480 on the on the fourth uh, the main bear or the uh what I call thrust thrust bear so this number two 2.4486 is two ten thousandths below the factory tolerance on a, on a factory journal and uh the last one is obviously um if that was two ten thousand that's eight thousand eight ten thousandths excuse me eight ten thousandths less than the factory's uh, minimum on, on this journal here so in order to resolve that issue um, um well anyway i put the crankshaft in with standard bearings and it spun fine and which is one of the things i said in a previous video to spin the crank before you start measuring clearances just to make sure they will at least spin and it did so then i measured my i put my bearings in my uh in my saddles here or well actually the saddles and the bearing caps torqued everything down and then i measured each of the inside diameter um, of the of the uh, main bearings and when i did that i got barely just just on the number of clearance on the on the front one just just on the number very close to the number on the second one same with, with the third but on the fourth i had 3.8 thousandths of an inch clearance and that's way too high um, the factory recommendation I think is 0 0.0025. So, in order to resolve that issue, uh, I realized I need to buy bearings that are one thousandth inch undersized to make this work. And by the way, I was trying to this crank looked very good. Um, it came out of a used engine, and it looked very good. I didn't see the point in having it polished or um, polished or turned since it, the, bear, the journals looked fantastic. And I mic'd them all the way around, and all the journals were round, so there was no need to turn it. At least in my mind. And uh, if I can make this work and not have to turn this crank, I'll save my customer approximately $170 because I'd have to buy um, undersized bearings. Let me back up here. Um, actually, I'd say I'd save my customer $200 because it takes it costs about $200 to have a crankshaft uh, turned because I'm gonna have to buy bearings anyway. So well, let me so let me get back to what I'm trying to say. So I want to save this crank. In order to do so, I had to buy bearings that were one thousand of an inch undersized and uh so i contacted northern auto parts they seem to have them in stock or they said they did so i placed an order for them and about a week later they let me know that they they didn't have them in stock and they couldn't get them from sale power but they did say they had some king bearings and they were selling the king bearings for less money and i said well i don't typically use king bearings but i'll take them in this case so they sent me a box of king bearings and so that box is uh is these here um, it's part number mb 445 si.001 and so they sent me these king bearings and they, they came in and so since the crank had already spun once i went ahead and started measuring uh clearances i didn't i didn't try to well i put it in and um i'll take it back i did put the crankshaft in and i torqued i torqued this down with the king bearing worked fine no problem Put the second bearing in here, tore it down, and it locked up the crank immediately, just tight as a bell. I couldn't turn it off. So I, I took that back off. Then I put the king bearing here, tightened it up. Same result, tightened it up, and locked it up. So I said, okay, there's no point going any further. These king bearings aren't going to work. Uh, so um, at that point, I took took the crank back out, took all my bearing caps off, and I put every put all the bearings in the king bearings in these bearing caps and torqued them down. And then I measured them with my uh, dial bore gauge. And so the king bearing on this bearing, since it was so far out to begin with, it worked out fine. It uh, gave me a 2 thousandths an inch, 0 .002, 0 .002 thousand inch clearance on this bearing, which the king bearing uh, works fine here. When I measured the king bearing on this, on this uh, bearing, um, on this bearing cap, I got the exact same size as the crank. I had 2.448, actually it was a little smaller, it's 2.4485. Well naturally if you have a bearing that's smaller than your journal, it's going to lock up. It's going to squeeze it and lock it up tight as it can get. So on this bearing, on number three, two, and one, I put all the king bearings and measure them. 
and they were identical to the size of the journal. Well, you can't have, that's zero clearance, won't work. So the keen bearings would not work here, here, or here. So I decided, uh, as a Hail Mary, I said, well, I guess I could put the keen bearing here and put the original seal power, uh, standard size seal powers back in here, or here, here, and here. And what that gave me is a hybrid, I'm using two different sets of bearings, the seal power for the first three and king for the last one. And it's worked out. It's given me about a clearance of 0 .002, 0 0.002 here, 0 .0024 here, 0 .0023 here, and 0 .0022 here. Now, this was in spec. I think the spec on numbers three and two is 0 .0025. So this is within spec and that's within spec. The front was supposed to be, I believe, 0 .0020, I believe. So this one is two ten thousandths above the specification. But per personally, I'm not going to worry about two ten thousandths. I'm, I'm saving this crank. I'm saving my customer $200. And I'm not going to take this crank out and have it machined for $200 and, and, and buy 10,000 undersized bearings just for two ten thousandths of an inch uh, over on one bearing. I believe that's going to work fine. So I've saved this crank. and. Um, like I say, the king bearings locked up on three, two, and one, but they worked here. So I've got a hybrid situation where I've got king bearings here and seal power here, here, and here. So it took the cost of two sets of bearings. I think the seal powers were on, say, $35 for the set, and king bearings, I think, were maybe $20 for the set. I can't remember. I'll have to go back and check that. So in essence, for about $50, I've reused this crank and saved my customer $150. Actually, no, it is actually saving them. Uh, say $180 because he's going to have to buy the bearings, one set of bearings anyway. So I saved him about $180 by, using, do, by doing this, using one set of bearings here and another set of bearings here to get the clearances right. And I said, like I say, the, the alternative to doing this was to send it to a machine shop, have all the journals reground down uh, 10,000 10, under and use 10,000 under main bearings everywhere. That's, that's a way to do it. But when I see a crankshaft that looks in great condition, I just really don't see the point in spending the money just for the heck of it and give the machine shop something to do. Um, he's got plenty to do with it. So as you can see, before I put this crankshaft in here, you can see I'm using a king bearing on the end. It has a different color and a different texture. It's a little bit shinier. And I'm using seal power bearings here, here, and here. One, two, and three. The seal, po the seal power bearings are standard size. This king bearing is a one thousandths inch undersized. So as you can see, this crankshaft rotates very freely. And now that I've got all the bearings uh, situated and I got all my clearances just right. So I just want to show that, that the crankshaft is very easy to span it with my bare hands. And that's what you want. It's time to take this crankshaft out. Uh, take all the bearing sh shells out. Take the block and clean the block and the crank and assemble this motor. I don't have to do any further checking of bearing clearances. It's ready to assemble. I think that's it for this video. I hope, you, uh, I hope this made sense and you learned something about it. And again, you can, uh, what I've done is mix and match parts from different manufacturers to make this crankshaft work and, and uh, save my customers some money. So uh, subscribe if you enjoy my videos and uh, turn on notifications so you get uh, a video every time I post. Thanks for watching and have a good night.